That guy drinks no coffee. What's wrong with him? How many coffee drinkers in the room? Amen. Hey, look at that. Time for the rest of you to catch up. I was 35 years old when I started drinking coffee. We didn't have coffee shops back in the day. Anybody remember that? You just got it at the restaurant with your meal or you brewed it at home. That's where I get my coffee. It's so much cheaper. But I will give a plug. This coffee here is good. I've tried it. It's $3. That's it. One size, all, I mean, a few varieties. I would encourage you. It's, it was good. What I had was awesome. So check it out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth or shame me if I'm wrong. I'm open to that. Well, here we are. Can you believe it's the second Sunday of 2023? Already. Just 50 more Sundays and we're going to be celebrating 2024. <laughs> but how fast two Sundays can come and go, it, it, will, it will be uh, here before we know it. So I want to ask you this question as we get started into the message this morning. What, what does the new year hold in store for you? What does the new year hold in store for your family, for our church, for this nation? You might have some, some big goals for yourself personally. How many of you set goals for yourself this year and you're staying on track so far? Or if you're gotten behind a little bit, just don't give up, catch up, stay with it. it you got big plans, new year, new you. Some of you may have some, some real challenges that you're facing right now might be something that you know is just on the horizon. As Pastor Kerry mentioned in his prayer, we have a lot of people who are, are battling with sickness and disease. We've got a number of people with cancer, and so um, a lot of other things. But I just sense this kind of a, I don't know, a weight as we move into the new year of the unknown. It's exciting, but at the same time, it, it can feel a little heavy. Um, there's a lot of instability and unrest in our world. I don't know if you sense that. Politically, economically, we've got inflation, $5 a dozen eggs. That's just a, that's just a picture of where, of where we're at. I don't know if that causes you a little bit of anxiousness, but never in my life as I look back until the past couple of years, do I ever remember walking into a grocery store or a store of any kind and seeing empty shelves? It's, it's kind of a sign where we're at. Supply chain issues. We've got workforce issues. Um, you know, I, I see, I'll walk up to a store and sometimes it says we're closed early today or we're not open today. And it's just, it's an interesting time. I know healthcare workers and law enforcement are under a lot of stress. I mean, I hear feedback all the time, people having six to nine hour wait times in the ER. It just, the world is changing. And you're, you're looking at me going, Pastor Jeff, what a way to start the new year. This is so, so encouraging. And honestly, I'm not trying to be negative. I, I, I have a point in this. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a downer. I want to encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Let's keep our focus in pursuing him and, and following him. And it's great to see the crowd that's here today. For those of you that are joining online, we're glad that you're here with us today. And I believe that God has some great things in store for us. But I want to encourage us to, con to, to continue to walk by faith not by what you see going on around you. Listen, if you're putting your faith on what you see going on around you, we might as well curl up, go to bed, and never wake up. But God is with us. We can be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That's what he wants for us. Don't let the enemy get you distracted or discouraged or defeated. Listen, we win. The Lord is on our side. And greater is he that's in us than the one that's in the world. We're living in times where I, I told my class on Wednesday, this year very well could be the year that Jesus returns and raptures the church out of this place. Are you looking forward to that? And I'll say if it doesn't happen this year in 2024, you know what I'm going to start by saying? This could be the year. And I've heard this all my life. I'm 55 years old, almost to have a birthday here in the beginning of the year. I'll be 56 years old. And this is what I've heard my whole life. But I think now more than ever, we've got something to, 
to attach to it. There's, there's a lot of things that just point to the Lord's return. And as we move into this series on purity, I want to remind you of a scripture that's found in 1 John 3.3. 3. It says that he who has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. So when we have this hope of the Lord's return, it causes us to live pure lives. It should. We should be watching, we should be looking, we should be ready, we should be waiting for the Lord's return because the Bible said he's gonna come like a thief in the night. It'll be just like in a moment. There's not gonna be a lot of warning, but for those who are watching and ready and waiting, Bible, there, you'll remember a parable of the 10 virgins. Five of them had oil in their lamps. And there was five that, that was about to run out and they couldn't get the ones who had oil in their lamps to give them any oil because they, they were ready. They had to take off and go get oil and in the meantime, the bridegroom came and they got left. I don't want it to be that way for us. Let's be watching, let's be ready, let's be waiting. Let's walk close to the Lord now more than ever. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. God can be trusted to keep his promise. So let's hold tight and let's not waver in our hope. Let us think of ways that we can motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Do you see how all this connects together? I believe we're here today because we have our hope in Jesus. You didn't just get up this morning early and say, ah, I wonder what I'm gonna do today, let's just go to church. You intended to come here before now. You're here because you have this hope. And I wanna encourage you as we, we're, we're moving into this Fresh Twins series and the, the whole topic is purity and some of you might be going, yeah, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna talk about sex all the time? Listen, purity has something to do with sexual purity, but purity is huge. And as we, as we talk about this, I want, you, I want you to be focused. And I want you to put your effort into being here. Listen, we need spiritual disciplines in our lives. We need to be here. And I know I'm talking to the choir here. You're here. But will you make this year, will you make consistency in God's house your effort to be here? We need each other. We need to be regular attenders because we need each other. And there's people that need you. Be here for them. Read the word consistently, systematically. Start a Bible reading plan. If you haven't done it, don't say, ah, it's already January the 8th. I can't, I can't read through the Bible. And yes, you can. I can read through the New Testament in the month of January. How many of you are with me? Okay, those that took that challenge, we're in the middle of Luke right now. Look how fast we've gone in eight days. But I wanna encourage you, get in a Bible study. Study the Bible with us. We've got a lot of classes. Pray. Make time to pray. We need these disciplines in our life. And so in the midst of all that's going on in the world, I believe that the best is still yet to come. I'm not giving up hope. I'm not being discouraged. I'm not being doubtful. I believe our best days are still ahead of us, despite what's going on in the world. You might have to jump a hurdle to get there with me. But listen, the best days are ahead because the Lord is on our side. God is for us, he's not against us, and greater is he that's in us than the one that's in the world. We win. So today as we begin our fresh wind, our, our spiritual emphasis week, this is, this is uh, something we've done for the last couple of years, two times uh, a year. We've set aside days where we really try to dig deep, where we try to focus on the Lord, and I believe that these are important and valuable times, and I want you to make it a priority to be here this week, tonight, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And this is different, that we've never done one in January, but we thought, what a great way to kick off the year, and it's our pastors who are doing this. You're not coming to see some celebrity evangelist, it's us. And our hearts are for you, our hearts are for our church, and I hope that you will set aside time and make it a priority to be here. We need these times. I believe that God's gonna do something powerful in our lives as we seek him. And uh, purity being our theme, I think purity is one of the most undervalued principles of our culture. We live in an unclean world. There's not a lot that I will watch on TV. 
And maybe the show that I'm watching is fine, but I don't like the commercials that show up in between. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Purity is almost considered a curse word in our day. Purity is the ideal that God has for us. In this theme of fresh wind, we have a verse that's kind of a theme verse, and we're going to be memorizing scripture this week, so can you put on your, your, your workers, your thinkers, your brains, and let's work on a verse. This is the theme verse for fresh wind, found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. It says this, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. We're going to learn that verse. How many of you, yet you already got that down. We can take it down. Listen, let's say that together. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Can you do that again? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Jesus isn't, like I said, just talking about sexual purity, not even moral purity. He's pointing to a spiritual purity, a purity of heart. This concept of purity of heart is found throughout the scriptures. The best way that I think to uh, describe what purity is and is to consider how we describe purity in other places, other physical things that, that describe purity. Re- Revelation 21, 18, the word pure is used to speak of gold. For something to be pure gold, it means that it's gold and nothing else. There is no blemish, there's no anything else. There's no element within it, it's 100% gold. It's holy and completely gold, it's pure. So purity communicates to us a wholeness, not partially one thing and partially something else, but whole. Someone who is pure is the same on the inside that they are on the outside. If you could slice a person open and look what's inside, don't do that. But the Bible gives us other ways that we can, that we can examine and see uh, what is pure and what's not because we know that what comes out reveals what's inside. Proverbs 35 says every, Proverbs 30 verse five says every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. It's flawless. It proves to be true. God's words and his promises are worthy of our trust because they're tried, they're true, and they're proven to be true. We just read a scripture earlier, Hebrews 10, 23, that said God can be trusted because he keeps his promises. When the Bible talks about purity, it's speaking about keeping ourselves from sin. So being pure means to be without sin. It's not a popular message in the day that we live in. And I think many of you might be saying with me this morning, saying, you know, uh, if purity is being without sin, I can't do that. Yes, you can. I understand that the scripture says all of us have sinned. We all have fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. I understand that. But Jesus died so that we could be free from sin. And his blood covers our sin. And it takes living a life of repentance daily. We know that to repent is to turn the other way. If this is the way I'm going and it's a way of sin and I need to repent of that, I turn and I go the opposite way. And I'm so thankful that Jesus' blood covers my sin and purifies me of all unrighteousness and all sin. But listen, Jesus didn't die for our sins so we could go on sinning. That's not why he died. He died so that we could be free from our sin, not so that we could continue sinning after that point. We need, we need, we need God. Listen, Jesus lived a pure life when he lived here on, earth, on this earth and he was continually getting away to be with the Father. We need time with the Father. We need to pri- prioritize time with him. Why is this topic of purity important? Because for the pure in heart, they will see God. How many of you want to see God? I look forward to one day when I'm going to see him face to face in heaven. But here's what, I, here's what I know. We can see him here. We can see him here. I want to see God move in my own life. I want to see God move in the lives of my family. I want to see God move here 
in the lives of people in our church. I want to see a move of God here in church. And purity will help us to see God. God is perfectly pure. And I believe that he is the one who wants to purify us. He wants us to be pure. He's drawing us closer to himself. Listen, we can become so distracted by the things of this world. We can be so distracted by the things of this world and drawn to the things of this world that really are insignificant, they're temporary, and they're unsatisfying. We're thinking that they're fulfilling us. But there is nothing in this world that's ever going to satisfy you. But God can. Those things are pulling us away and causing us to stray. But purity is being in the world, but not of the world. What am I saying? I'm not saying you got to get rid of your TV, never listen to music, can't play any games anymore. I'm not saying those kind of things. That's the kind of things that I grew up hearing. And listen, I I think that there may be something to that. If God is telling you, turn off the TV, get rid of the TV, guess what you should do? Get rid of the TV. There is life without a TV. But we're we're not going there this week. We're just talking about God building in our lives as we seek after purity. And so in the next few days, we're gonna be talking about purity in a variety of areas in our life. And this morning, we're starting off by talking about purity in our words. And I have this question for you. Are the words that you speak pure? We're speaking all the time. And as we talk about speaking, talking, listen, we, we speak with our tongue but these days we also speak with our thumbs, right? So it's not just the words that come out of your mouth, but what comes out of your thumbs. Are the words that you're speaking pure? And this goes far beyond curse words. And some of you might be thinking, yeah, I have no problem with cussing. Doesn't, doesn't, I, I just don't do that, I don't swear. Great, but having pure words is far beyond swearing. Are you, are you lying? Can you, can you be uh, honest and say maybe once in a while you might lie or exaggerate a little bit? Gossip, complain, be a little negative, of course joking, beyond just the words that we speak and that go this way with our thumbs. Are we living pure? We need purity in our words. In this series, every message will have a specific verse. And you've got our theme verse, Matthew chapter five, verse eight. Those who are pure in heart will see God. But today, our focus and the verse that we're gonna memorize, we're coming up, but here's, I wanna give you a little bit of foundation. Why are we doing that? Psalm 119.9 says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? And I'm just going to drop off the young because I think it applies to all of us. How can a person keep their way pure? How can they stay on a path of purity? And it says, by living according to your word. We need the word of God in our lives. Psalm 119.11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. If purity is living apart from sin, listen, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. We need God's word in our heart. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. We need the word of God active in our lives. So here's our verse for today as we're talking about purity of words. Luke 6, 45. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Can you say that with me at at least once here? Let's say this together. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You might know this in a little bit, this is NIV, you might know it in an older version. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I wanna just say this, not in my notes, but we are gatekeepers of what goes into our heart. 
For what you look at, what you listen to, is the gateway to your heart. And what you're putting in your heart is what's gonna come out of your life. It's gonna come out in your words, it's gonna come out in your attitude, it's gonna come out in your actions and the things that you do, and we're gonna get into some of that later. But today is talking about words. I'm just saying, what goes out of our, our, our mouth is from our heart. So you put good things in, you're gonna get good things out. You're gonna put bad things in, guess what's gonna come out? Let you figure that out. So the question I want to ask this morning is this. What is your heart full of? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Pastor Zach is preaching in the other room, and as we talk through this message and plan it out, we realize how much the Bible has to say about the purity of our words. So this might be a little bit different, but we know that God's word is truth, It's living, it's active, it's powerful. It's not gonna return void or empty. It's gonna accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. God can communicate so much more through his word than I could ever do. It can speak it much more eloquently than I could ever speak it. So before I share just a few verses of scripture with you, I would like to ask for you just to bow your heads. And I I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray for us this morning. Holy Spirit, would you speak into our hearts this morning? God, we want to live pure lives because we want to see you. We want heaven someday. We want to see you right here in our world today. We want to see you working your plans out in our lives. And so God, would you pour your spirit out in this room today that we would receive and have ears to hear what you're speaking to us as we listen to your word as we look to your word god would you speak to individual hearts and lives here this morning we thank you for your word that's powerful that gives life to us and i pray that this morning that every heart every life would be open and responsive to hear what you're speaking to us this morning in jesus name Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Psalm 34, 12 and 13. You may want to take notes here if you're, if you're one of those kind of people. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Ephesians 4, 25. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of the same body. Ephesians 4.29, do not use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Matthew 12, 33-37, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad, for a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will give an account on the day of judgment for every empty, idle word that they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. James 5, 12. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear. Not by heaven or earth or anything else. All you need to say is yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Don't be swearing. I swear to whatever. If you will just be honest and let your yes be yes, people will believe you. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 37, just a simple yes I will or no I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. Proverbs 10, 11, the words of the godly are life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Proverbs 12, 17 to 19, an honest witness tells the truth. A false witness tells lies. Some people make cutting remarks. But the words of the wise bring healing. Truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. Proverbs 13, 3, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. 
He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Proverbs 15, 1 and 2, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. Ephesians 5, 3 and 4, but among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Psalm 141.3, set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Proverbs 21.23, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. Psalm 34, 13, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Proverbs 4, 23 and 24, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Proverbs 25, 18, telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an ax, wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. Proverbs 26, 18 and 19, Just as damaging as a madman shooting a deadly weapon is someone who lies to a friend and then says, I was only joking. James 1.26, if you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. 1 Peter 3.10, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. 1 Timothy 4.12, be an example to all believers in what you say, the way you live, your love, your faith, and in your purity. Colossians 4.6, let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Proverbs 16.24, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs 18, 4, wise words are deep, like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. Proverbs twenty two eleven. 11, whoever loves a pure heart and gracious speech will have the king as a friend. Psalm 19, 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O God. That's just a portion of what the scripture says about our words I'm going to invite the worship team to come. James says a lot about the tongue, calls it a, a deadly poison, a restless evil. No one can tame the tongue. The tongue is a small part of the body, but it, it makes great boasts. The tongue, like a rudder, can take a small little rudder, can move a huge ship. A bit in the, big of, in, the, in, the, in the mouth of a horse will guide him and steer him where you want him to go. And he also talks about a spark, a fire. The tongue is like a fire and a, where a small spark will set a great, a great fire. We need to be careful what we say. And I come back to the question, what is your heart full of? What is your heart full of? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? What is the condition of your heart? And listen, I'm saying, you might say, yeah, I'm mostly, mostly pure. No. If we're gonna say pure gold, it's gold and nothing else. And I think we have to take seriously when the word talks about us desiring purity in the inward places. We need pure hearts before, the, before God. David prayed a prayer. David had committed a great sin. And as he's listening to the Holy Spirit, he, he's drawn to this place where he says, God, purify me from all my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Give me back the joy again you have 
You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins, remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, renew a loyal spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit, a willing spirit in me. Is that where you are this morning? It's a song that I've been listening to all week long. And I want you to listen to this song as you let the Holy Spirit continue to speak to you. But I remember as a kid growing up singing this song and it reminds me so much of this modern version of this song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Our lives lived in purity in righteousness and holiness is what we need. If we wanna see God move, if we wanna see God do anything, we've got to be honest and sincere about our relationship with him and the way we live our lives. And listen, I can't live a pure life without the Holy Spirit. I can't live a, a, a pure life without responding to his, his voice in my life. What is he speaking to us? You can watch the lyrics or just close your eyes as they sing this song and then I'll be back. I want my life to be filled with God, with His presence, and with His power, and with His glory, and with His goodness. How many of you want more of Him? Would you stand with me this morning? I intended to give us lots and lots of time to respond and I just want to ask you this morning if the Holy Spirit is speaking something to you this morning and you would say in a response to even the message of this song Lord I want my life to be a sanctuary for you I want your presence to feel at home in my life and maybe there's something there's just something that you've been struggling with something that you just go okay I need victory over this thing I just want to commit myself to saying God I want you and I want my life to be pure before you I want to be holy not so people would look at me and say I'm something great I just want you more than anything Jesus I want you I don't, I don't want to just go through my day doing the things that I've done all this time. I don't want to just sit in front of the news. I don't want to just sit in front of the Netflix or whatever it is. Listen, we have an opportunity to respond to the holy God Hallelujah. who gave his life for us, shed his blood for us, not so we could just live however we want to. Listen, it's enough. His blood is enough. But he didn't shed his blood and die on a cross so that we could just go, eh, I just go go to the bank every once in a while and pull something out. I think we cheapen the grace of God and we don't take serious, living, pure and holy lives. This is not about you being good enough. This is just the response to say, God, I am in a needy place in my life. I live in a needy world where things are really crazy. And I just need to be centered. We need to be centered. Would you respond this morning if you're responding for anything? Maybe you need prayer for whatever it is that's causing you to respond. Maybe you just would respond saying, listen, I'm going to make a commitment to purity. That I'm going to live pure before the Lord. That I'm going to allow his spirit to, to fill me up and to root out the things that, that aren't there. I'm going to listen and I'm going to respond and I'm going to, I'm going to be obedient. And I'm going to follow him with all of my heart. However you're responding this morning as we sing this next song, would you just, would you just respond? The altar's open. There's enough room for all of us. I absolutely, not for me, I would love to see a response of, of everyone but only because I get a glimpse of what would it be like for us to truly take God seriously and follow him with all of our hearts. I invite you to come and respond. If you need prayer, come to the middle section. It's in the some people. I need people to come pray no with us. Can if you want to just respond otherwise, just out to the sides, but want to make room here in the middle to pray for needs, just come and res respond.